Hey, welcome to another video. Girlfriend won't watch with you. I'm still Tate, the barista, coffee tech, and firmware engineer who just refuses to keep espresso machine stock. Much like my Rocket Apartamento from my previous video, this machine has some modifications that enable quite a few features that just about any espresso machine can achieve. But in addition, there is app control, programmable profiles, flow rate analysis, and logging. So let's jump into it. Because the GS3 is already a pretty capable machine, I essentially just dropped in the same circuit board that I designed for the Rocket. This board serves as a drop-in replacement for the electronics that normally come in the GS3, including the support for three solenoid valves, and this time, I'm finally taking advantage of the Wi-Fi capabilities of the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. This opens up the opportunity to see some pretty powerful information on my phone. So for example, I've got a shot timer, I can independently control each of the boilers, so I could even do like ambient temperature shots if I wanted to, but typically I just turn on my brew boiler especially if I don't want to waste power on the steam boiler. I've got a live flow rate readout, which I find really useful for dialing in. The schedule I use quite a bit because I can use it to turn on the machine early in the morning so I wake up to a warm machine, or I can turn it on on the way home to a warm machine because this thing does take quite a while to warm up. There's also a brew log so I can keep track of temperature, when I pulled the shots, flow rate, stuff like that. And the part that gets really fun, the brew recipes that I use. So this is where things get really interesting. Let me run through what these recipes can look like. So normally when you're starting a shot on an espresso machine, all you're doing is opening a valve and turning out a pump. Just like that. Or I can break it down and say, that is the valve opening, and in a couple of seconds, that's the pump. And here's when you start thinking, how the hell did you do that? Because GS3s aren't supposed to do that. Through the app, I've added the control of three new variables, being pre-wet, dwell, and bloom. Pre-wet is just turning on the pump and the valve, just like a regular shot would start. But then dwell is the time that I would spend after that where I can leave the pump on but turn off the valve, similar to the way that Lamarzoka does their pre-infusion. Bloom, on the other hand, is the opposite, where I turn off the pump but I leave the valve open so if there's any ambient pressure in the boiler, that just drains through to the espresso. So again, if I just leave everything normal, I'm just going to leave everything off. It's just going to open the valve, turn on the pump, and after a certain amount of volume, the shot will just stop. Like that. Then I can do something like Lamarzoka does, where I do a bit of a pre-wet and do a bit of a dwell, and I'll try that out. So the pump's going to stay on, but you'll, you'll hear the valve close for a second. It stops flowing, and it keeps flowing. Or I can do the opposite, where I turn off the dwell, turn on the balloon, so what's going to happen is to start normally and the pump turns off but the valve stays open and I still get some some water flowing out. And this is where things get pretty interesting because we're getting closer to what would be a blooming espresso. And another fun thing we can try is turning off everything except for bloom and then we can actually emulate a bit of line pressure. So that's going to just open up the valve and just let a little bit of ambient pressure out almost like line pressure. This is more close to like a traditional pre-infusion. So let's go ahead and pull some real shots. First shot I want to do is very... First shot I want to do is a blooming espresso. It's totally one of my favorites. Uh, I'm going to ramp up a little bit of pressure, turn off the pump, let that pressure relieve through the espresso until it gets basically back down to ambient, and then go back up to the full pressure. So that's actually totally possible with a rotary pump machine like this. Let's, let's run through it. Okay, so again, I'm going to give us a little pre-wet, and then it is going to bloom. I like to do upwards of like 20 seconds. Let's try this out. So the pump runs for three seconds with the valve open. The pump turns off, but the valve is still open. And we should slowly start to see some coffee coming through the basket. I'm down at about two bar. There's those first couple drips. Oops. That and now we're in the full infusion or extraction. I'm going to go right there. And as you can see, I was getting a track of the flow right there. And that shot was a 35 second shot. 
It ended at about 207 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, one thing to note is I don't keep track of the volume coming from the flow meter during that first infusion. So if I were to start this again, the flow meter starts at zero and stays at zero for this whole pre-infusion. And... And only when I start getting into the actual brewing do I start keeping track. And the reason for that is, is there can be a big variance in the volume of water that's going into the basket during that first infusion because it can depend on the amount of headroom that's between the screen and the bed of coffee. So if there's a lower bed, it's gonna take more water to fill up that cavity. That's really not something that I'm interested in measuring. I'm more interested in measuring the actual flow of coffee through. Um, so it's just not a valuable number to keep track of until I actually start getting coffee coming through and out of the basket. I'm pretty sure the very smart people at Mavam are doing something very similar. Next, what I wanna do is essentially simulate a commercial machine that is connected to line pressure water. So most commercial equipment is fed by a three bar water supply that is always providing back pressure into the boilers. And so that means if I were just to open up the valve, we would get a small amount of pressure to flow into the espresso. You would typically hold this state for a few seconds for pre-infusion and then turn on the pump for full extraction for the rest of the, the brew. This is why Lamarzoga turns on the pump for a few seconds during pre-infusion to hopefully not build up too much pressure but just get water to the group in the same way that a low pressure pre-infusion from line pressure would produce a gentle introduction of water. But interestingly, if you just open the valve, don't turn on the pump and just let whatever ambient pressure inside the boiler feed into the, the puck, it actually produces a pretty decent pre-infusion and pretty gentle flow of water. Let me show you. So this time I'm gonna totally turn off the pre-wet, which means there's gonna be no pump pressure. And instead, I'm going to turn on the bloom, just leave the bloom on. So that's gonna look like this. So right now the boiler is at about nine bar. Um, but if I just open it up, we get a nice, gentle flow of water coming right through. So it's not too dissimilar from if I was hooked up to line pressure. I sort of get why Lamarzoga didn't implement this feature. It's pretty nice, but it's totally dependent on whatever the state of the boiler is before you start the extraction. It's totally possible it could be a zero bar, it could be a 12 bar, and that would change the extraction. So I understand they're really focused on consistency and theoretically this isn't very consistent, but you could also just pressurize the boiler yourself by turning on the pump for a few seconds and then turning off the valve, stopping that extraction, and then going back into this sort of pre-infusion. But it's, it's a bit of a tricky workaround, which I can't imagine Lamarzoga is very comfortable with. So again, the pump is not on, but the valve is open. So I might get a little bit of coffee coming through, but I'm at very, very, very low pressure. Actually, now that I think about it, it's kind of strange to have it go this long, but it'll still, still probably taste good. Actually, literally, as I think about it right now, that might actually be more similar to like a Slayer shot because the flow rate is so low. Um, so it's an acceptable shot, I guess. So thanks a ton for checking out this video. I've really appreciated the support over the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's been really amazing to see how excited people are about these sorts of things. So it's cool that there are nerds out there like me. This machine's been a lot of fun to work on. Uh, I'd love to work on something else, let me know. Uh, I'm thinking about a Gaja Classic, uh, something like that. Maybe not a Breville because as a coffee technician, I've already had my nightmares with those. So uh, that's kind of off the table. Uh, who knows? But we'll see. So keep your eyes peeled. See ya.